Hello viewers, so welcome to my YouTube channel. In this episode today, I'll be telling you about what province you should be looking at right now. I mean, if you're outside Canada, you want to come into Canada, what province you should be looking at right now. If you want to come into Canada without spending much money and you don't have to stress yourself about I mean, English test and the rest of them. So you want to make sure you pay attention to this video because it's loaded. I'll be telling you which province you should be looking at because with this particular province, I mean, it's like getting a bonanza and coming to Canada without having to stress yourself and breaking the bank. So I'm going to stay tuned. I will be back. Okay, viewers, so welcome back to my YouTube channel. I still remember my humble self, MC Bernardino. This is Canada Reality, where I dish out content for those that are already in Canada and those that are aspiring to migrate into Canada. Is this your first time on this YouTube channel? Please do me the honor, hit on the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, so that anytime I drop a video, you'll be among the first to get it. Last, always, I try to drop one video in a week. So this video, just like I said, is loaded. I'll be telling you about the province that you should be looking at right now. If you're outside Canada, you want to migrate into Canada, you don't want to stress yourself so much, you do not have a lot of money in the bank, what province you should be looking at? That is the question I get a lot of time. So please hang on tight, call your friend and I endeavor, if you can actually give this as a gift to somebody, please share this video with whoever you feel is on a dilemma right now, is thinking about coming to Canada and he or she is actually stressed. So share this video with them because you can actually be doing a big favor for them. So you want to agree with me that coming into Canada is uh, it's not so... Uh, I mean, it's stressful. I mean, it's uh, it demanding. Let me use the word demanding because, I mean, if you have to come in on a study, you have to make sure you get the finance to pay for your tuition fee. You have to get the sponsors, um, bank statement, and the rest of them. So that could be very cumbersome for people that do not have that financial power to actually come in on a study. And another way is coming through the express entry is very demanding. You have to do um, your English, IELTS, sell people as the cases. You have to make sure you do your West evaluation or um, whichever body you want to use to uh, evaluate your result. You have to make sure you score high in those English tests. You have to also make sure you get those bank statements. It could be very demanding and it could be very tasky. It takes someone that is actually tenacious about it and uh, I mean, giving it 100% attention that can actually succeed in this process. So it can be very demanding. And because of age, some people have actually fizzled out because I mean, they feel that they can actually go uh, ahead with it anymore because probably age is not on their side. And in terms of education, they do not have the highest of the highest qualification in terms of education to actually pursue it. That's why I did this research. And based on the question I get from people, I felt this particular province, it's more like they're doing bonanza in the last few months this year, they've been actually inviting tons and tons of people. So I want you to actually look at this province because that could be the easiest pathway for you to come into Canada. Before I go further, let's use this opportunity to a heartfelt condolence to the people of UK, the Commonwealth, and by extension, the whole world. The lost of the Queen, she's been buried today. May I so rest in perfect peace, and we hope that, I mean, everything goes well. All right, so let me quickly bring to your notice that, that this platform, Canada Reality, we are now in Clubhouse. I mean, Clubhouse, for those of you that are familiar with it. So we've opened the Clubhouse now, we'll be, and we'll be hosting a room every Sunday. So in this video, down in the link section, you can actually join us in Clubhouse, where you can actually see, it's going to be an interactive forum, one hour every day. And for the timing, just click on the link down below in the description, where you can join us, and we talk about immigration, how you can actually come into Canada. So I implore you to actually go in the link below in the video description so that you can actually join us every Sunday depending on the time zone of wherever you are but we'll be talking about immigration and how you can come to Canada. So without further ado let me tell you the province I'm talking about and it is none other than Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan is one of the 10 provinces that we have in Canada. This particular province, I mean for those of you that have been following the trend of provincial nominee, this particular province have been inviting people back to back back to back every week i mean literally they like inviting a lot of people with experience and some no calls that they are looking for immigrants so this particular province is what you should be looking at i mean i have a lot of friends that are in saskatchewan right now because they actually took advantage of this provincial nominee i mean when you go to their website which i'll be linking in the video description you will see that they are through their provincial nominee you can actually come in through express entry, through, I mean, they select people from the express entry pool, and there's another one that they call occupation and demand that's not related to express entry. I mean, literally, the province on its own just created that particular stream 
for people that have experience, that have exp work experience in that particular occupation that are in demand in Saskatchewan, uh, Saskatchewan rather, and they invite people based on that. I mean, so that's what I want you to be looking at. And also, I'll just give you a summary of what this provincial nominee is all about. I've done it in the past if you want to check my previous video, but I'll summarize it for you. It's now left for you to go to their website and actually go and read more about it. But I can bet you that this is one of the easiest and the fastest way you can actually come into Canada, irrespective of what your age is and what your score in IELTS is. Now let's talk about how can you calculate your score? How do you qualify for this? How can you, what is the cut off mark? What are they looking for? If you want to qualify for the Saskatchewan provincial nominee or the, under the occupation in demand. Don't forget that I'm particularly streamlining this video to the occupation in demand because there are some occupations that are some knuckles that are actually in demand in that particular province. So after a total of 110 score, all you need to score, the minimum you need to score is 60. I mean, if you can get 60 points out of a total of 110, you stand a very good chance of being invited to apply for the Saskatchewan provincial nominee under the occupation in demand category. Now let's look at how do you accumulate these points? I mean, so it's break down into different segments. So the first one is labor market success. Okay, labor market, labor market success that's the number one factor that they consider so it depends if you have a master's you get like 23 points bachelor's you get 20 points if you had a trade certificate or equivalent of that in Saskatchewan you get 20 points you get if you have a Canadian equivalence diploma that requires two but less than three years you get 15 points I mean if you have Canadian equivalence certificate of at least two semesters but less than two years program you get 12 points so that is that under that so moving into the skilled work experience so it depends on how many years work experience you have if you have five years work experience probably from outside Canada not in Canada you get 10 points if you have four you get eight points and it keep diminishing like that you can visit their website to see what I'm talking about and also apart from that if you have six to ten years in addition to i mean if you have more than five years you get more points to still under that particular factor so now let's talk about the language ability right so how fluent is your language how can you speak how can you write how can you read all these are determined by ielts or self people the english test you take so take for instance if the first language after taking your first language if your first language is english or french so clb eight and higher you score 20 points if you have clb seven you score 18 points clb six you have six, 16 points clb five is 14 points clb four is 12 points so that on its own i mean the highest one is clb clb eight i mean clb eight if you put it on ielts kida clb eight is likely saying that you need to score minimum of 6.6.5 across all uh all the four in uh, writing speaking reading uh, um speaking so if you can score 6.5 which you have to take it to clb 8 you are home and dry you can score as high as 20 points i mean that is significantly low as compared to the express entry whereby you have to score as high as clb 10 11 12 so that you can stand a very good chance so in addition to this english if you've learned french too if that's an additional language that's an additional point for you too i mean after studying english as a first language if you can study french and score some basic points you can also get additional points i mean in french if you're for your second language clb eight and above is 10 points clb seven is eight points clb six is six points i mean just go to their website you can actually see this point for yourself i can tell you of the truth if you can do this you stand a very good chance so let's talk about the age 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 so many people have been agitated by the age factor oh i'm too old i don't stand a good chance in the express century look at the saskatchewan provincial nominee so let's look at the age factor so if you're less than 18 you don't score any point because it's not designed for people that are less than 18. if you are 18 to 21 you score eight point if you are 22 to 34 you score 12 points. If you're 30, 35 to 45, you score 10 points. If you're 46 to 50, you score 8, eight points. And if you're more than 50, you do not stand a chance. So that means that even if you're still within the bracket of 46 to 50, you can still get additional 8 points. So that is hoping. That is nice. And those are the reasons why I feel that irrespective of what your age is, as long as you're not over 50, you stand a very good chance with the Saskatchewan Provincial Nominee Program. So let's look at other, other points that you can actually get still under the occupation in demand of the Saskatoon provincial nominee. So if you're high-skilled immigrant 
um, offered employment. So if you've been given an employment offer in Saskatchewan by a company in Saskatchewan and you have the offer letter, you can get additional 30 points. So it's not necessary you need to, but if you have it, you get 30 points. But if you can't get the offer letter, you still stand a very good chance under this particular stream. So in addition to this, if you have a close relative that is living, that is a Canadian um, citizen or a permanent resident, Either it's your uncle, your aunt, your niece, your nephew, your first cousin, your step, whatever, and lives in Saskatchewan, you can get additional 20 points. So that's another point. So you can see with all this point that I'm saying that to get 60 is very easy. I mean, even if you don't have a relative there, if you have other factors and you can meet those demands, you can still get that minimum of 60 all over 110. I am telling you that there are a lot of people that I know that they didn't even score more than 60, probably within the range of 60 to 70, and they are now in Canada through this particular stream. Another, way, another point factor that you can get still under this stream is that if you can get a minimum of 12 months, at least 12 months work experience in Saskatchewan, you get additional five points. For those that are probably studying uh, Canada, study in Canada or they school in Saskatchewan, they have a job there, they can get these five points. So it is not for everybody. And likewise, last but not the least, is past students. If you have studied in that province and you want to apply for this particular stream, you get additional five points. So, I mean, with all these factors that have itemized, if you look at it, all you need to do is take a critical look at this Go to their website and look at it. If you have, a, if you are probably you're 35 years of age, you have a BSc or you have a master's, you have a relative in a Saskatchewan, look at this thing. You can easily accumulate and your IELTS sell people, your English test is very good, your age is okay. You can easily accumulate 60. Why not apply for this particular provincial nominee? Because that could be your pathway to come into Canada. So after talking, so let's now be pragmatic about it. How can you apply for this thing? In this video, in the video description, I'll be linking the website where you can actually just click and create your profile so you express your intention to apply for this once you express your intention you put in all your information that you claim to have you put it on their website and if your no code don't forget that your no code needs to be in demand in order for you to stand a chance so you need to actually go on their website to see the no codes that are in demand i mean I may be doing a video on the knuckles that are in demand in Saskatchewan so that I can actually guide you. And also, they have an exclusive list of knuckles that they do not want in Saskatchewan. So, if your work experience is in those exclusive exclusion list of jobs that they do not want people, they do not want in Saskatchewan, if your work experience is there, you do not stand a chance. But those are just few... Uh, no codes anyway. The major bulk codes are still in demand in Saskatchewan. So all I want you to do is visit their website to be able to see which no code are in demand so that you can actually tailor your reference letter towards this no code, no codes and you could stand a very good chance of coming to Canada very fast. All right, viewers, I hope you actually understood the video that I brought for you today. I don't know why I'm so passionate about this video today because, I mean, I want people to come into Canada, right? I mean, I just want people to come into Canada. And the moment I identified this as a very genuine and legitimate way for people to come into Canada without having to break the bank or stressing themselves on English test, thinking about their age, your worst evaluation and the rest of them, I feel I should just share this video. Don't forget that I always have you in my mind. If I want the information break for me to give you, I try as much as possible to make a video and tell you how you can actually come into Canada. This is another avenue, please. Stop looking at the Express Entry alone. Stop looking at study alone. Stop thinking about the LMI alone. Look at the Saskatchewan Provincial Nominee, the Occupation in Demand stream, and that could be your easiest pathway for you to come into Canada. Okay, viewers, I hope you understood the video that I brought for you today. If you do, please hit on the likes button. If you haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel, please, one of the few ways you can do to support us is please hit on the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, so that anytime we drop a video, you'll be among the first to get it. And likewise, like I said, earlier on please share this video with whoever you feel will benefit from it thank you very much and don't forget i said that now we are in clubhouse now clubhouse for those of you that are familiar with it i'll be linking it in the video description down below so click and join us in clubhouse where we discuss about immigration matters for those that wants to come into canada we can actually discuss with some resources some people that actually even know better than i do we talk about it so it's always on sunday but the time you have to click on the link so that i will tell you wherever you are when you can actually join us so see you in my next video Peace out. See you in Canada very soon.